Okay, hello again, everybody. Welcome to these lectures uh, on e-business in tourism about destination marketing and management in the era of information and communication technologies. We have about an hour or so. Let's see. Yes. There it is. Great. Exactly an hour to go through um, what is a destination and how has online and information and communication technologies affected the destination marketing and, and a little bit about management of the destination uh, itself. And we're going to start with looking at the destination called Finland. And what is the organization representing Finnish tourists, uh, Finnish tourism? It is, of course, Visit Finland. Visit Finland is part of uh, uh, FinPro, which is our um, uh, governmental organization responsible for uh, increasing Finnish exports. Uh, travel and tourism to international markets is definitely an export. All the international tourists that come to Finland uh, and, and buy here accommodation and buy uh, food and, and uh, go shopping and, and go to restaurants are bringing money to Finland, which is great. Uh, tourism industry is already quite a huge market in Finland, bringing billions of dollars and, and employing thousands of people. And this is because um, uh, tourists and, and how many tourists come to Finland and how much money they spend. And, and the Finland, for international tourists, when they think of what is their destination that they come to, it's very typically Finland. And we have been at the Center for Tourism Studies uh, studying Finnish destinations and their marketing and their social media behavior in, in several different projects and, and research uh, streams and uh, and. These are some of the thoughts and conclusions that we have derived from the research uh, we have been doing in, in our university. I am myself from, from Savonlinna and uh, one of the projects that I'm involved with is, is Savonlinna Destination. How to market Savonlinna, a small region in the eastern part of the country, to international markets. And it is... Um, First, uh, there's um, what is important in, in modern um, destination marketing management is this little round thing over here in the right corner. Lonely Planet, uh, in their listing, listed Finland as the third, most, uh, third best destination to visit in 2017. And Visit Finland has... Uh, taking that very well into account in their website. I, I just wish that this would be a link that would send the user to that listing, but that's just a, a logo. We have destinations in Finland. Visit Finland divides Finland into four different destinations. We have Lapland, Lakeland, Helsinki and Archipelago. Samonlinna is part of Lakeland, but we can see more clearly when, when a tourist thinks where to go in Finland, they will look at destinations. And they have basically four different options. Lakeland, Arch Ghost and Archipelago, Helsinki and Lapland. These are very well um, pictured here in, in Visit Finland strategy and websites. Each with their own strengths and, and peculiarities and differences between these regions. So uh, a person can go wherever whichever destinations um, offering is, is most suitable and most interesting for, for him or her. Lapland especially is doing fantastic work at the moment, especially in, in Chinese markets with the support of Visit Finland and, and Finavia and Finnair especially. And um, uh, the other destinations are coming a little bit behind. We have Lapland. We have Lakeland, and this, this picture, these maps also show 
what kind of destinations we are talking about. Huge destination from the Finnish point of view. There's so much different things in it. Then we have coast and archipelago coming from the Russian border all the way to the Swedish border, following the coastline. And then finally Helsinki, our capital region, uh, with its own peculiarities. And I really like this when you click, for example, here, this. No. When we go here and choose, for example, Lakeland and Open Lana, this one here, we can see that Lakeland actually uh, is here, but it has 10 different destinations. It has 10 different destination management organizations. Each one of these have their own websites for international customers. Some of them have social media channels. For international customers, they are doing uh, promotion, promoting themselves in international markets. Uh, they are, have social media channels in Russia, in, in English, and, and so on. But, uh, I, and, and, and the results also show us that it's, it's very uncommon for an international tourist to have just one of these 10 destinations as their destination where they think they are traveling. They are traveling in Finland. They're traveling in Eastern Finland, Southern Finland. Helsinki is important for many international tourists. They visit Helsinki and then they go somewhere else in Finland. Ex for example, Kuopio region or Joensuu region or Savonlinna region, Mikkeli region, to enjoy different kind of Finland. And it is especially that all these, the what is uh, very... Uh, uh, Typical for Finnish tourism is that our volumes are quite low. We are not mass tourism destination. Eastern Finland especially is, is not. Well, maybe at some point of, of, of time we had quite a huge masses of Russian tourists coming to, to Eastern Finland, but we do not want to be a mass tourism destination. It doesn't fit our profile that well. We, of course, want to increase the number of tourists in Eastern Finland all the time uh, increase their quality, but we do not want to be a mass tourism destination. And for example, we had the latest uh, accommodation statistics from uh, Eastern Finland and Savonlinna, for example, and we are seeing huge increase in, in the number of German and, for example, Italian tourists coming to Finland. Italia was used to be a big market for us, but uh, then they stopped coming because there were so many Russian tourists in the region and, and the Italians didn't like that too much. But now that the Russians are gone, the Italians are coming back. So there's this whole uh, constant um, uh, interplay between these different markets that the marketers have to be aware of. And the thing is, when the volumes are low, it means that there's not much income coming from international tourists to all these little destinations. So it could be that, and it should be, just as the Visit Finland shows that how Eastern Finland is, Lakeland is one destination in Finland. It's not 10 destinations, it's just one destination. It would be really good if the tourists could find all the information about the Lakeland destination in one place. Instead of now when he or she is planning a trip to Eastern Finland, he has to visit six or seven different websites to find all the information he or she needs, which is really difficult to, for a tourist to do. And, and when they are planning a trip, um, where to go and what to do and how all, all, these, uh, all these destinations fit together, it would be much easier for a tourist to, think, uh, to go to one single website on uh, Lakeland to find all the information he or she needs. Same is true for, for other destinations. For domestic markets, I can completely understand that, that these destinations are competing a little bit with each other. But when you are considering international markets, uh, we need to bring more tourists to Finland. And when there's more tourists coming to Finland, all the regions in Finland will benefit from that. And for that, we need efficient international marketing, international online presence, 
cooperation and customer point of view thinking a lot more than, than what we have at the moment. And when we have examined, for example, social media profiles of these destinations and their content is really similar, what they are posting to social media uh, are forests and lakes and trees and cottages and, and nature and so on. Their, their content is very similar to each other. That would also suggest that they should focus on uh, creating a unified Lakeland image, Eastern Finland image to international tourists instead of being just a so diverse field of, of different, uh, different destinations that do not work really well together. But there are some developments um, now in proceeding that would suggest that these destinations are moving to the right direction and starting to work more and more together, putting resources together and using those resources to promote themselves in the international markets. I think that is one of the central uh, roles of destination marketing organizations, destination management organizations, to combine resources in areas because all the Finnish companies and most of the Finnish tourism companies are really small, small and medium-sized enterprises with not that uh, much um, resources to go to international markets just up by themselves. But if, if all the resources are combined and, and uh, marketing done together, then all of them could have more effect than if any, everybody would do everything by themselves. And this is definitely where, where uh, destination marketing should be going because it's... Uh, with, with information communication technologies, there's so many skills that they they need and have to be aware of as we have been going on and saying it. It's, it's ridiculous that each of those destinations develop these skills for themselves when they could have uh, people who are focused on promoting all of these, just few, fewer people with much more skills, much more expertise, much more um, knowledge about the destination than, and especially larger picture that the that is important for tourists instead of just uh, focusing on their own little mm -hmm. small village or town or region. Mm -hmm. We are talking about national tourism organizations which promote countries abroad and they are really important uh, actors in the tourism business and, and what they are doing is increasing awareness in international markets. That's central theme, whatever they, they do. Hi, I'm Stina. Welcome to Iceland Academy. Iceland truly is an amazing country. And at the Academy, we're here to help you get the most out of it. So whether it's learning how to get over your hot tub awkwardness or ensuring your glacier safety, our first class tutors will guide you every step of the way. Each term has four classes. And each time you complete a class, you receive a badge. Collect all those badges and you could win a trip to Iceland to test out your new skills for real. So, choose a class and let's get started. We can't wait to have you at Iceland Academy. How, how great this is. This is exactly what we've been talking about. Uh, you can... Um, uh, let's see... You can log in with Facebook so that whenever you get one of these batches, it's, it's saved to your Facebook account. Uh, it includes gamification elements, social media elements. Uh, it promotes the destination. Uh, it is a bit funny. It has this funny factor. Hello, my name is Guðmundur. Welcome to Iceland Academy. In today's class, we'll be talking about one of our favorite activities, hot topping. We take hygiene very seriously, and everyone is required to take a shower before entering the pool area. So, remember the little rhyme? Heads, armpits, crotch and toes. Crotch and toes. Heads, armpits, crotch and toes. Crotch and toes. Head. Armpits, crotch and toes. There we have it. Squeaky clean. Now, on with the butter. 
Hot tubs are very important to the Icelandic people. In here, we are all equal, and no topic is off limits. So come to Iceland, where you feel nice, warm, and relaxed. So fantastic, let's click enroll now. And, and when, when I sign in, let's see if this works. I'm not signed in, I think. I am, yes. Great. So this keeps track how many courses I have visited. I can share it on Facebook, attend next class and, and, and so on, meet the tutors. This is exactly what most of the national uh, organizations are doing. Then we have this Swedish campaign. The Swedes gave a phone number that anybody anywhere could call. Um, and it, that was basically the Swedish number, the first country in the world with its own phone number. And you could get connected to a random Swede and talk about anything when you called that number. And um, let's see if this works. Yes. So, in total, the phone was used for 367 days. Almost 200,000 calls were received, mostly from the United States. Um, on average, they talk three minutes, and from 190 countries, they got phone calls. 200,000 people with this kind of simple, simple thing that went quite, quite viral, which was uh, really successful. So they, and, and, and presenting these results, showing the numbers, and it can be calculated here that um, uh, what, what happened. Frequently asked questions. They analyzed the results of this campaign. And, um, and, and also provided uh, for those who are interested in this campaign, your guide to the adventures in Sweden. Book our favorite, let's try this one. Adventures in the South. Yeah, this is, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It says, book your... Um, when, when we go back, it says that book your... Book our favorite adventures. And, and uh, there's just no adventures to book anywhere. I cannot book anything here. There's no book now. It's just our selected accommodation, I could sure. Book accommodation in Sweden, but there's, those are not those adventures maybe that I would like to book. So there's um, still a little bit um, unclear things in this, but in any case, these kind of marketing campaigns are quite well. And when we go back to the uh, mobile world, uh, we could see how the carriers could track the people who um, are visiting a country. So there's an ongoing uh, question in the literature. What is actually a destination? There is an old, um, old uh, definition by Buhalis from 2000 it, that it's a combination of travel products, attraction, accessibility, amenities, available packages, activities, and ancillary services, and so on. But lately we've seen more research that states that um, destination is, is a very fluid concept. And for some people, destination could be Savonlinna. For some people, it could be Eastern Finland. For some people, it could be Finland. For some people, Nordic countries. We, we, we really need to know what is the destination for, for different kind of tourists and, and what kind of destinations they are looking in, in, in with scale. But this basically uh, covers the whole tourism system. Uh, what is happening in, in, in tourism. And basically, this is very similar to, to uh, Buhal's definition of, of what is a destination. It includes many different actors and organizations, um, and, and it has many different consumer segments that come from different places of origins, travel to the region in different ways, and so on. This understand us to help us to understand what what is a destination, what we are talking about. 
similar pictures can be found from, from all over the literature. And, and what, when it comes to destinations, we are very often talking about destination management organizations, and, and they are really big organizations, like Visit Finland, our national uh, tourism organizations. But then there are regional organizations that we saw in the Visit Finland map, that in Eastern Finland there were altogether then 10 different destinations, and all of these have their own destination management or marketing organization. Uh, it's, it's been used... Um, in literature, in either way, DMO is typically either destination management organization or destination marketing organization. But I, I, I prefer destination management. Um, and, and then the websites we visited, the websites of destination management organizations like, uh, like Visit uh, Saima, for example, are part of destination management system. Uh, one part of these destination management systems is all the information that the businesses and the organizations upload to the system that keeps track of what is happening in the system, but the tourists only see the website part of that. The destination management system is connected to internal and external resources. And uh, DMO, it's the main uh, outlet for DMOs to promote the region. DMO's mission is, according to the researcher, to create an image, an image for the destination, coordinate businesses and public actors within the destination, and provide information to tourists before and during the trip. It's about leadership, management, and marketing of the destination. But again, we have to ask, what is a destination and for which tourism segments? Um, destination management organizations should be able to adopt the consumer point of view. They are really regional organizations at this moment. And when they are based on regions, they are based on cities that they operate in and their regions, they are not really customer-centric uh, organizations. Their business models and, and, and the models could be customer-centric. But when the customers are not considering just that region as a destination, then the destination management organization is in, is in trouble because it should provide, we all should provide the customer the information he or she needs as easily as possible. And, and just focusing on one region is not doing that. Uh, the destination management system is an information system. It's also a distribution channel and strategy management system. And also internet that the companies can use to uh, provide uh, their products and information and material in uh, it combines and distributes information about the regional supply of tourism products. So basically, it is this. It provides information about uh, Helsinki, it provides information about accommodation, eating, nightlife, events, whatever the tourists might need. Uh, it also, uh, this is, and, and, and as you can see, this is really like uh, informative, inform, information intensive website, these DMO websites. Whereas uh, when, when we compare uh, Visit Finland website to Visit Helsinki website. Visit Finland is all about inspiration. Making tourists think that they could come to Finland. Whereas Visit Helsinki, for example, is that when people have decided to come to Finland and they are looking at information what to do in Finland, then Helsinki comes up. So they have different roles in the tourist information search process. And this kind of... Uh, I, I, I really think that all these websites should have their own roles and, and uh, reasons to, to exist and also differ from each other. So it's not good that all the websites are the same thing. Then we also have hotel management systems, but you can, uh, that's a little bit beside the point here. Um, for example, uh, Park and Gretzel listed nine success factors for destination management systems already 
uh, already eight years ago, nine years ago, a long time ago. Uh, but they are really what makes a good destination management organization website. These things affect and should be um, well uh, well placed. And, and as, as you can see, this, this also can be um, derived to the uh, technology acceptance models and it's... Um, it's the latest models, especially. And um, this is a good, good um, article that shows you how difficult the tourism information search process is, not just from the theory lessons from, from yesterday, but also from the practical point of view. So it's a very difficult search process when someone is looking for information where to go next. They start the process somewhere and start looking for advice from their friends and relatives, search for information, collect all the information they have searched together, search again, ask advice, go to social media, uh, combine information from various sources, visit different websites with different devices and so on. It's a really complicated process that all the websites in our travel chain, in our travel value chain, should be able to cater for, to make this process as easy as possible. And why is it that tourists are so much are using so many sites and so many um, uh, devices and tactics to find information about the uh, holiday? Is that I don't think the tourism industry has is is really yet ready to cater for the needs of of tourists. So there's too much uh, actors in the field. There's not enough information to be found in one service that the tourists need to look for various services to plan their whole holiday instead of just finding everything from, from one place. Let's see what kind of... Ah, yes. I've been talking... You saw my framework about uh, these technologies that that have, could be used by tourism businesses. But this marketing technology landscape, oh, there, there's even a newer version that has come up. This is an older one. I have to update it in, in the slides. But you still can see that there's quite a lot of more things that I have not even remotely discussed uh, about. All these kind of softwares uh, made for different purposes. But you can see, and, and you can go to this picture and see what kind of marketing experiences and marketing operation softwares they are uh, for various purposes and get ideas what you can use and, and can't use but but the ones I've presented should be enough for for basic business and, and basic tourism uh, services but if you want to use technologies in your business there's basically no limit what uh, how many applications and software and and similar you can use. So that's huge field of different kind of marketing destination tools and softwares. Uh, destination management, as I said, is all, putting it all together, seeing the big picture. And, and this regional focus of uh, destination management at the moment is, is kind of uh, omitting the big picture in, in, in my mind. It's also about managing the destination, and, and uh, we are going to go through uh, research we have conducted in, a, in our university, a literature review on, on destination roles, and this um, management part comes quite strong. And uh, destinations are indeed networks of various actors, not just tourism businesses, but also um, other actors that all affect the experience of a tourist. So, if we look what is a destination from the tourism experience point of view, it's uh, completely different than what we, when we look at the what is a destination network or destination from, from the DMO point of view. Um, let's see if remote control tourists, but this is just, again, another kind of example what technology and combining resources can, can do. Okay, there. Website does not work anymore. That's that was a, a little bit old campaign, but it was nice. Uh, people could uh, there were locals 
marketing people walking along, around, um, yeah, you can read more here, uh, in Melbourne, yes, Melbourne, and, and people were walking around the city and people from all over the world could say to them what they should do, go and eat cupcakes, take a balloon ride and go to the beach and visit that store and, and, and so on, and they could see everything real time with the cameras that these remote control tourists had with them. So from all over the world you could basically control these tourists and, and they visited huge number of companies in the region and all these companies got visibility in international markets, not to say how much visibility the Melbourne as a destination get, got because of this campaign. And similar kind of marketing campaigns can be found from Norway. This is funny, the Scream campaign very social, very viral campaign. Uh, then this is an excellent uh, article on innovation investment to boost tourism. Um, let's see, yes. How investment in technology can really pay off. The ski resort of Grechen in Canton Valley has 40 kilometers of slopes with 10 ski lifts. That's small compared to the nearby resort of Zermatt, which has over 300 kilometers of slopes and six times as many lifts. Between the early 90s and the beginning of the 2000s, Grechen, like many other places of its size, was struggling to compete with destinations abroad. Maintaining its infrastructure was expensive and the ski lifts needed upgrading it was time for some significant changes. Olivier Andinmatten is the president of the board of Krechen's tourist office and runs the resort's oldest hotel, the Hanigalp, which was built by his great-grandfather over a hundred years ago. In the 70s During the 70s and 80s, there was a general boom in tourism and Krechen did well. But people started resting on their laurels and in the 90s didn't do enough to stay on top. The various business interests, the ski lifts, the tourist office and mountain restaurants devised their own strategies, following their own interests. Finally, in 2007, an effort was made to bring all parties together with the goal of creating one company with one CEO. By pooling resources, Grechen has significantly improved its marketing. Instead of campaigns run by individual businesses or associations, the newly founded Grechen AG does the marketing for the entire resort, which also saves a lot of money. As simple as the concept seems, it took some effort to convince locals of the new project. The CEO of the tourism company is Berno Stoffel, who came to Grechen during the restructuring phase in 2008. At the start, I had to figure out how this village functioned. Who were the influential families and what were the political and economic structures here? I had to find these driving forces, which was important in order to give the destination a boost. Our strategy was simple. We wanted to be among the top three family destinations in Switzerland by 2013. Secretly, though, we were hoping to become number one. Once the strategy was in place, it was time to implement the changes. But what kind of investments should be made? What do tourists nowadays really want? Grechen hired students to observe visitors. How well do tourists manage to find their way around the village? What problems do they have when getting onto the cable car? These findings formed the basis of the planning and building of new infrastructure. Instead of keeping two main cable cars, Grechen decided to close one, but to do a major upgrade on the other. A lot has changed. We have a lot more space at the counter and people have to spend less time queuing up to buy a ticket. Before, everyone, also people who already had a ticket, had to pass by here to get on the cable car. 
Now skiers can easily get on the lift via a ramp outside the building. Another novelty is this locker room, where people can leave their skis during their stay instead of having to carry them backwards and forwards from the hotel. The lockers can be opened with a ski pass. Other changes are less visible to the tourists, but just as significant, such as this monitoring system, allowing cable car staff to mark cabins with children on board. This way, the crew at the other end knows when to be extra watchful. Thanks to these recent investments, the cable car has a turnover of 6.5 million Swiss francs, while the mountain restaurants have 3.5 million. Together, that's an increase of 1 million. The Hanig Husli restaurant recently opened a second floor. During the high season, the place is packed. Normally, mountain restaurants are self-service, but here we serve our customers. Of course, it takes more staff, but with good planning, it works fine. And guests feel more comfortable when they're being served. We don't offer any fries, but all sorts of valet specialities, such as fondue, cheese toast, or meat with rust. <laughs> Those looking for apres ski activities can join an evening torchlit walk. This German family has come to Grechen for the first time. They discovered the place on the internet. Ja, in den letzten Jahren waren wir immer in äh, Österreich oder auch schon mal so in Schwarzwald. The past few years we went to Austria or Germany's Black Forest. It's our first time in Switzerland. It's a really nice place. We had a sunny day yesterday, which was fantastic. Now with the snow, we're hoping to do some skiing tomorrow. And if this is too much work, guests can attend a local choir concert at the church. Grechen has won several prizes for its innovative approach. Yet there are still things that can be improved. Grechen has a lot of holiday homes. Of all the beds available, only 10% are in hotels. This means there's enormous potential. Over the next two years, we'll evaluate the quality of these vacation homes and we'll market them and make them bookable online. The market for traditional alpine hotels is no longer growing. A family often prefers the freedom of an apartment, yet they still like to have services, such as having access to a swimming pool, a creche, or restaurant meals that are included in the price. These alternative forms of accommodation are greatly in demand at the moment. So yeah, I, I really, we could analyze this video for, for quite a long time if, if you were here, but I think that video brings up many points that we've been discussing or I've been presenting here uh, in these lectures on, on how to choose a strategy, how to choose a focus for your business, for your destination, uh, how to do customer research to design a unique working customer experience how you need investments if you want to develop your destination and also how you need to use online channels, how, do you, how you need to make everything bookable and easy to access for, for a destination. This brings us to the question of destination and e-commerce. If we go to, for example, visit Finland, Let's see, I want to spend 24 hours in Helsinki. I should go to coffee, okay, culture break, fine, Kiasma. Can I book tickets to Kiasma somewhere? No, I cannot book tickets to Kiasma. How about Campy Chapel of Silence? No. Okay, you get the point. Then, uh, let's say I want to go to Lakeland. And, um, well, this, <laughs> I, find, I find it funny that this is a picture of Tampere, so I, I know that Tampere does not look, <laughs> when, 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 we, when you leave Tampere, uh, railway station, it does not look like this. 
and this is this is really common in Finland that even the cities promote themselves as nature destinations. But let's go to visit Tampere. Of course, I come I come from the English uh, visit Finland websites, but nonetheless, it it transfers me to Finnish website of visit Tampere, where it should automatically be English when I'm coming from an English English uh, place. Okay. Lake City, fishing tips for four. Can I book a fishing trip? I can add this to my... Okay, this looks nice. I can add this to my plan. Uh, what, does that, what does that mean? I can add this to my plan. Where can I see my plan? There, my plan. Okay, great. So I have to go here. Um, excellent English. Um, where can I book this? Where can I book this? Services. Yes, guided fishing trips. Yes, please. So I probably have to email him and wait for the answer for one week if he decides to respond. Probably he would. I hope. I, I have a good feeling that he will respond to my emails. But there's just no way I could book this fishing trip. I couldn't book it in Visit Finland websites. I couldn't book it in Visit Tampere website. I couldn't book it in the business website. And I have to go quite a no huge number of links before I find the contact information for <laughs> for this when we think I, I start from here. Okay, let's go to Kuopio Tahko. I think that's something that I could book my uh, holiday. Soon to be here, winter, fantastic. Can I... Okay, we... I, I know how to book accommodation, that's not a problem. I go to amazing experience, fantastic. I want to have an amazing experience. ATV Safari Buono. Much noise. That's terrible. Okay, now I'm here, Tahko Safari. Now I probably can book it somewhere. Where is book here button? I just don't. ATV vehicles. Yes. Ah, yes. Finally. I'm. Uh, the uh, text is at least in English, but it's um, ask for an offer. So basically, I, I still cannot book. I cannot book any of this. I can only ask for offer and the, and the button is in Finnish. So it's really difficult for a tourist to book these services. It's, uh, and there's this my stay service in Finland. So there's, this is a place where Visit Finland is uh, providing space where what Visit Finland is providing tourism businesses in, in Finland that they can bring their products here. And Simon on the rocks. This is great. Can I book it here? Add to my stay. Okay, great. No, I, I get the information, but I still cannot book it anywhere. Finally, yes, online booking system. Great job, Lakeland uh, GTE. There's, finally, we found a button that says book it. <laughs> it took us a while, but finally we could book a service, which is, which is fantastic. But this just demonstrated, and Finland is, is, is not the only one. Um, but we are not making it easy for travel to book his whole trip, everything from one place. And there's been huge discussion on how do we do that. It, it goes without saying that in modern world, everything should be bookable online. 
as much as possible. But the question is, how do we do that? There's basically little reason for des small destinations to start up their own online shops. They can be really expensive. Uh, and from the customer point of view, it would be best if you could book everything from Visit Finland's website. But is it, is it Finland's job to sell these products or is it Finland's job just to promote Finland for international tourists? Because these two things uh, require completely different kind of strategy, completely different kind of resources, completely different kind of business processes and everything. So if we would move Visit Finland from uh, just promoting Finland into sales organization, it would be a huge shift in, in everything. In, in marketing, in management, in, in businesses, in business models and, and so on. So I think it's um, at this point we have to look, we have to be sure that the customers can book everything. If, if you want to book as a, if you are an activity company, you have several options, getyourguide.com, uh, viator.com, that will sell your products for commission. It's easy, free to put your products there and they will just take a commission. Mm. You can use peer-to-peer -peer rental services basically to sell anything. Peer-to-peer -peer, uh, services basically to sell anything. Find a suitable web store for your product that you can implement also to your website. There are good uh, mobile commerce applications and websites that you can use to sell your products. Hotels and, and such are go without saying as well as flights. But but these small businesses and and which way they can sell their products is, is something that we are constantly developing and thinking, uh, not only in Finland, but all over the world. There are some destinations that are really e-commerce focused. For example, um, Visit Britain. Welcome to Great Britain. Buy tickets. There you can buy tickets to uh, travel and transportation, sightseeing passes, trips and tours, attractions, all this. But there's, there's no these small businesses uh, experiences and so on. Let's say I want to buy a trip to Stonehenge from London, for example. How do I do, do that trip? And passes probably... Okay, it goes to Visit Britain Shop. It's a different domain. London Travel Cars, London, London, Britain Official Sightseeing Trailer. No. Let's say Destinations. England. Okay, great. Devon, Oxford, but. Brighton, no, Stonehenge is nowhere, so I would probably have to go to Google and maybe find some way. But in any case, uh, even, even these kind of uh, uh, actors are, there are some things that you can buy, but not everything. And I, I think that if you would have one place where you could buy basically everything would be the best option, but that would be most definitely the most difficult option and the most expensive option. Well, this is uh, uh, some research that we have been doing in, in our university and, and we've been thinking that what are the things that destination management organizations should do when there's so much information and communication uh, technologies going around. Um, Let's skip this. This is basically what are the roles of destination management organizations. Tell the destination story. Get on the list of consideration. Inform, educate and advise visitors and newcomers. And then there are other forms or roles what, what they should do. There are other listings of what, what the DMO should do. But this research aims to understand uh, what are the roles and actions of DMOs, what they are responsible for. And we did a literature review uh, that what uh, tourism academics have been studying regarding DMOs and digital technologies, information and communication technologies. Uh, 
we did a search on, on Scopus database, which revealed all the 117 papers connected to the topic. And we analyzed all these 117 papers and 12 different roles were ident identified. Destination management organizations have to uh, be leadership leaders of the destination, take it forward, develop it, lead the branding process, contribute to customer satisfaction, and be really the leaders of the area. There always needs to be a leader in the area. I think that was a fantastic example of the Swedish uh, uh, small village, that they had all these different actors who were all doing the same thing. There was no leader who was responsible for the development of the destination. And that destinations need to be... There needs to be a leader who decides where we are going, what we are doing. And without this kind of leader... It's, it's not going to develop in any rational way. DMOs also should do infrastructure development, make sure that there's everything the tourists need, including Wi-Fi, collaborate with external stakeholders, uh, travel agents, airlines, other destinations, internal stakeholders, um, like all the actors that are within the destination network, whatever the destination is. Uh, they have website and destination management system that need to be updated, that need to be uh, improved all the time, and it affects tourist decision-making process quite a lot. So DMOs are also responsible that the tourists choose the destination. Um, <clears throat> collecting customer information, communicating it to relevant stakeholders. There's so much data in the internet, in the social media, about what the tourists are saying um, about the destination. And someone needs to analyze this data. Someone needs to know where we are, where we are going, what the tourists are saying about us. And if there's something bad going on, who is responsible for fixing it and giving that information to them? That is also responsibility of a destination marketing or management organization. Of course, marketing, attracting new customers, keeping existing customers doing customer relationship marketing, as well as search engine optimization, search engine marketing, advertising, uh, doing social media, uh, having a presence in social media, and so on. A lot of marketing communication that they have to do. Also, in case of disaster, they have to be the one uh, organization responsible for communicating communicating what is happening in the destination regarding this. It's always uh, the uh, DMO that, that tourists are looking answers from. Destination image and brand communication especially is a huge topic in, in the literature that how, how um, the DMO is, is responsible and contributing to these topics. Then, of course, the technology is developing all the time, and who is responsible that the technological level of the destination is uh, current and on par with competitors? It is, of course, the DMO. And they have to learn to use new technologies. They have to have the resources, knowledge, uh, know-how to use these and implement them, implement them, them in, in, tourism, in the field of tourism and, and tourism business. Also selling. Some authors say that DMOs, uh, some DMOs at least, are selling also tourism products online. Not just promoting, but also selling. And it's um, not all, but some, as, as we saw. Then the sustainability, taking care of the sustainability of the region, that the, the region is developed in sustainable field. And also using information and communication technology tools for sustainable destination management. So there's quite a lot of things that um, destination marketing organizations have to do, have to be aware of. And it's, it's, uh, at this moment, it's, it's a mess. But in any case, they do have. There's also in ongoing discussion, do we even need destination management organizations? But I, I personally think that it's the leadership that all the destinations need. But we have to be careful at what level we are talking about the destination. Because, and, and we have to find a way to talk about destinations in the levels that the customers understand. Not just 
how they have previously been and how regional governments are funding them and so on. That is uh, not the correct way to cre create unique customer experiences and, and, and customer value. But technologies do offer fantastic opportunities, especially regarding marketing uh, for, for destinations. And they are, I, I think that destinations are in the forefront of tourism marketing and especially tourism marketing campaigns. And there are so many fantastic examples of how they have leveraged social media and utilized uh, social media campaigns to promote their destination. It's always fun to watch what, what they come up next. Let's see if we have any questions here. No questions. Uh, it seems that the chat is still working. You all have Googles that you can use to Google whatever you are you don't know and, and so on. So we are going to have one last break for this course, I think. Yes, for 15 minutes. Quarter to three, we will uh, continue. So 15-minute break. Thank you and, and see you soon.